Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension and today's video is about how to program and bless water. And uh, first of all I give you an overview on water in general and also the different ways of conditioning and programming water and my five cents on it. And then there's going to be a guided meditation where you program your own water. So, um, most of your body is water. 70% um, of your body by volume is water and 99% by numbers. This means out of 100 molecules in your body, 99 are water. This water is very small, the molecule is very small, and you know, other molecules, biological molecules, are quite large, so um, that's why. But uh, by numbers, you're 99% water. And uh, also, you know, water is, you know, very, very, very old. Uh, you know, it has been basically recycled, you know, since time immemorial, you know, on this planet. Um, a little bit supplemented from maybe water asteroids hitting here and there. And, well, there is also say that water came over from Mars. Um, you know, that, uh, what, that Mars was a water world, just like Earth. And there was this explosion, um, maybe where Tiamat blew up. And so we got also the water of Mars here. And so also, you know, to understand, you know, from the big picture, the role of water in our life as humans, uh, water is basically the mother of, you know, all high cultures, you know, uh, which all have been practicing uh, water management and irrigation. You know, I mean, uh, according to mainstream um, anthropology, anthropology uh, as well as um, well you know Mesopotamia you know uh, with the uh, tiger and Euphrates you know uh, was the cradle of uh, civilization you know water um, as well as let's say um, you know um, when there was no water and there was water before like the tribes of the southwest in the USA, you know, or Angkor Wat's in Cambodia, you know, those cultures disappear really fast. And uh, so, yeah, high cultures, you know, around water. Well, how about uh, the Nile and Egypt, right? Um, or the Yellow River and the Yangtze in China. I mean, right now, what's about ballpark one and a half billion people, you know, are being fed. Um, by the fertile waters, you know, of these two rivers. And um, how about, you know, the Mississippi, you know? Uh, we wouldn't have any jazz without that river, so... Uh, but in general, you know, let's say, let's talk about the Ganges water. You know, it's uh, again feeding about one and a half billion people. You know, India is exporting rice and... Um, you know, it's just going all the way parallel across India, all the way to the Bay of Bengal. And uh, this is where everything is being produced. And uh, so this is all fed by one um, river and its contributory. And let me uh, uh, tell you a story that happened to me. Um, the first time I went to India, you know, I traveled from South India all the way to North India looking for an ashram where to stay permanently, you know, to get enlightened. So, um, and, you know, I was basically sent up to North, you know, to Rishikesh and Hardwa and somewhere around Rishikesh, uh, you know, I was told, yeah, there is an ashram over there. So I got off the train and uh, there was a, like a festival going on and uh, there were probably a few thousand people like distributed, no, maybe a thousand people, you know, distributed on the meadows around the Ganges. 
And that's it. No, you know, they only take people for the weekend, for the weekends. Yeah, intensives maybe, you know, but nobody staying permanently. Plus me being a Westerner. Uh, but they gave me some food, some prasad, and, uh, you know, I said, yeah, I could just sleep out there, you know, on the meadow. And so, you know, I settled down there with my little skinny sleeping bag, and I have to say, uh, I realized it was so peaceful there, so, so, so peaceful. Uh, actually, I heard little spherical sounds, and there was nobody really making music. I looked, and also I smelled um, roses, uh, very subtle, you know, just like uh, many times I smell when Mother Mary comes. Uh, no incense around. I looked, <laughs> I looked everywhere, no incense. I mean, you don't get this kind of subtle smell from incense. Um, yeah, so this was uh, the consciousness of Mother Ganges, you know, the love that comes from this. Now, um, from a materialistic point of view, you know, <coughs> how can we explain, uh, let's say, the effects of uh, Ganges water? And first of all, um, you know, the Ganges water comes from glaciers, you know, uh, from top of the mountains and glaciers are loaded with space dust, you know, dust from space or just the atmosphere. So, uh, lots of minerals and lots of also higher consciousness, you know, from the space dust. Uh, as well, uh, you know, um, there are always a lot of minerals uh, come from uh, the glacier grinding up the rocks where they are. So glacier water is always very, very high on minerals. And uh, also uh, there is an upflow of earth energy, of chi. Like on every top of a mountain you will have a, you know, chi moving up, just like a pyramid, you know. <laughs> it's like you have on a skyscraper, you know, you make anything tall and big, whether it's a mount, a mountain, a castle on top, or a monastery, the chi will flow up. You know, this is uh, kind of a very simple principle. You do not have to have an exact pyramid. Exact pyramids are, of course, you know, um, devices that are made to take very precise advantage, you know, of energy flow. Just like, you know, you produce a very precise lens to manipulate um, a light. Of course, glass refracts, but by precision, you know, you can get a high quality refraction. And uh, so something like this is the pyramid. Um, also, um, you know, the um, um, there is a lot of cosmic radiation coming in that is not being filtered out yet by the, um, let's say, the cloud cover or other matter, you know, um, that uh, protects the earth so there is more cosmic energy you know hitting the mountain peaks and um, you know water has memory it remembers all those things also uh, on high altitude you know is more prana um, I don't know whether some of you have experienced this uh, when you look in the sky and you take your eyes out of focus and there is a nice blue sky um, you can see kind of the little crigly worms that seems you know they're floating around and you see maybe a white outline um, so I observed those things you know these are not um, things floating around on uh, your surface of your eyes uh, and then you see kind of the shadows or other refractions. No, um, these are prana beings. And you will notice, you know, on top of mountains, uh, in good sunshine weather, there are a lot of them. And in uh, not so good uh, weather, you know, or maybe further down, or where there's not so much life force, there are less of them. So there are lots of prana beings up on top of mountains, uh, which could contribute to uh, Ganges water being special, as well as uh, ultraviolet radiation. Uh, ultraviolet radiation um, is 
um, used for water purification in standard mainstream uh, water purification system. I've seen them myself, you know, with a coil of uh, ultraviolet light, you know. No, actually it was the water that's coiling around the tube. Um, probably you can do it both ways. Um, but, you know, with ultraviolet light you can disinfect things, you know, very effectively. Um, even with CV. So, um, <coughs> and if water has memory, you know, these purification um, vibration uh, can be carried on. And then, of course, there's also the more mystical aspect of um, those yogis that, according to Hindu tradition, um, residing on the mountaintops. Um, not sure whether they are in the uh, uh, ethers or still in physical bodies, um, but to survive there, um, yogis have to be at least breatharians. This means uh, they don't have to eat or drink. And um, they also have to be able to control their um, body thermostat. Uh, and I'm not talking about um, burning black fat, you know, like animals do and humans cannot do it, you know. No, it's just like um, transforming uh, light energy uh, into heat. Um, so these uh, beings, you know, also um, probably have programmed um, you know, the water up there. So, the next big question is, of course, you know, what type of water, you know, should we drink? And, you know, because we have to drink every day, um, whatever, um, you know, uh, way is best for you is the way that you can do every day, you know, as a habit, you know, with not too much effort and entanglement. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. So let's start with the lowest, you know, tap water. I mean, I'm not talking about pond water. <laughs> let's not go there, uh, but tap water. Uh, I would say, you know, if you, if you cannot do anything to tap water, first of all, let it run for a little while so that, you know, you get rid of this water that was sitting stagnant you know, in the tubes, you know, absorbing things. Uh, you know, so get it kind of flowing so it's nice and fresh and cold. And, you know, after this, you know, do maybe an energy blessing, you know, or a spinning. And I will get into the energy blessing and spinning later. Uh, you know, much better is uh, like having something like a carbon uh, act, act charcoal filter, uh, like a Brita filter, you know, or an under-the-counter filter, or even a reverse osmosis filter um, to clean the water. I mean, if you earn into tea, um, you definitely feel a great improvement in taste. Uh, on the other hand, it is uh, clean, but um, there is no energy in it, there is no life force in it, no chi in it. So again, you know, I would um, bless that water and probably also structure it through steering, and we get into this later. Uh, then we also have uh, bottled water. You know, this is, of course, the ones in the plastic bottles. And, um, you know, all gallon jugs, and be very, very careful. Uh, I would not leave any of those in the car or in the sunlight. I mean, it's the heat, it's the sunlight uh, that uh, breaks down the plastics and, uh, you know, starts leaching out um, into the water and you will get a, a variation of oestrogen, um, you know, from plastic water bottles in the sun and um, it's unless you want to <laughs> have uh, any side effects from more estrogen than you wanted, you know, you better stay away um, from bottled water that may have been stored in the sunlight. Uh, another completely different uh, type of water is imploded water, um, which happens, you know, at the bottom of substantial waterfalls, and this means, you know, over uh, 30 feet high, you know, t over 10 meters high, and this impact 
you know, uh, of those molecules, you know, are smashing down, does something to the water viscosity, and the water becomes very, very silky. And uh, silky, probably easy to drink. And um, so if you have access <laughs> to a nice waterfall, you know, with pure water, and definitely try so, uh, but I think hard to get to. Um, now uh, there is also the question of, you know, should we have distilled water, aqua destillata, you know, or, um, you know, normal mineralized water, right? And um, there are different opinions on this, uh, but uh, in general, you know, distilled water will leach minerals out of your body. You know, as that's the fact. Now, some people may say, oh, well, we have too many minerals in the body, and some people may say, <laughs> no, we don't, <laughs> right? So, um, also, um, you know, there is no chi in, in those waters again, you know, and. Uh, so it needs to be cheat up again, and also, you know, for, um, I would say, um, distilled water, uh, I would add uh, pink, um, pink salt, you know, Himalayan pink salt, uh, which has pretty much all the trace minerals that you need, even tiny amounts of gold, and this and that. And from a yogic point of view, it is very, very important um, to have those finer trace minerals so that uh, you can um, sustain higher, more subtle brain function, right? So the philosophy and the understanding is, yes, you can sustain yourself, you know, on Spam, White Bread, and Thunderbird, uh, but you're probably not going to be, you know, the sharpest picking up cosmic vibration, you know. So the more refined um, and, you know, the palette of available substances you have in your body, um, you know, the better uh, sophisticated machine you can build. All right. Um, so now we also have this whole area of water with additions. And uh, one of my favorite, or the favorite of mine, is kind of water and shungite. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get into too many details, uh, uh, but, you know, I, you know, do your own research, but uh, I have it in, in my water. <laughs> I have about a pound of shungite in there and I have watched video you know where people very carefully you know used all kinds of water you know and on plant growth and the shungai water was definitely you know the best uh, which I agree you know especially uh, you know shungai takes care of all kinds of radiation you know cell phone radiation etc at least mitigates it and so to have this in your water is very good. It's also being used professionally uh, in you know certain areas of the world. Um, there is uh, then also you know a lot of people, especially in India, um, store their water in copper vessels. And um, also silver is good, but you got to keep that uh, pretty clean. And you don't really have to um, use copper vessels or silver vessels. You can use copper or silver coins. I wouldn't boil them <laughs> before I put them into my glass water container. Um, um, but I have to say, I used to, in India, when I used to live there, I used to have, uh, you know, my... Uh, my lota, my copper water container, and of course, as a pujari, uh, uh, you know, when you do um, a ceremony, before you do a ceremony, I mean, you not only, you know, take a bath or shower and have fresh clothes on, you know, you also, before you touch any of the uh, instruments on the altar, like the conch shell or shamara, you know, any paraphernalia for worship, uh, you purify yourself, <laughs> you know, with the water, you put it on your chakras, throw it, you know, you use water in a ritualized um, way. Uh, so, this is about the copper, you know, containers for this water. And uh, so, uh, 
there is, you know, one of the best ones I like is to add uh, pink sea salt to the water because, you know, we talked before, the it gives the uh, water a way to structure and uh, I think it makes it taste better but I have a supply of all the stuff that I really need, of all the subtle minerals I need. Uh, another way, another thing to add to this is lemon juice. Um, just a, you know, a good squirt uh, and um, this will make, you know, your body uh, alkaline and it helps in digestion and, you know, has so many side benefits, you know, vitamin C, etc. Uh, very easy to do. I mean, you don't have to squeeze a lemon, you know, we have like this, what's this quart, one quart of already pre-squeezed lemon juice, uh, you know, under three bucks. Uh, but it does the job. Uh, you can also add a little bit of baking soda um, to the water to uh, structure it. Um, I uh, would maybe take, uh, you know, a half a teaspoon, uh, maybe even a quarter teaspoon only um, for uh, maybe a gallon. And uh, it's not really to make the water alkaline. Um, it is more to help the water to structure itself. Uh, and let's talk about alkaline water. You know, it is available. Um, the problem is, <laughs> is alkaline water, that once it's in a stomach, you know, the pulorous uh, valve, uh, which is, is at the end of the story uh, of the. Uh, of the stomach is kind of like the bouncer for the duodenum, you know, which is the little short tract that comes right after, you know, the uh, the, the stomach. And so uh, this uh, pylorus um, um, valve uh, will only let uh, like the content of the stomach into the duodenum when it has you know reached a certain you know, pH value, which is sour. So when you drink alkaline water, um, that means, uh, and you know, this means it's going to interfere with the uh, salt, no, with the acidity of your stomach and you will have indigestion. So this is not the way, <laughs> um, you know, uh, so just making your uh, water, you know, super alkaline is not a good way that just creates indigestion and imbalance. Um, but, you know, a little bit uh, is definitely a, a good thing to do. Uh, but, you know, not for necessary chemical reasons. Now, another one is, um, and that's a very good one, if you have uh, a bottle, um, you shake it. You know, you shake it about a hundred times and you smile, and um, you, uh, it will energize it like anything. Um, I use this also for my own oils that I use on myself for massage oils, and uh, when I checked with the pendulum, um, you know, on some new oils, how my body liked them, it didn't like them that much compared to the oil that I made myself, and, then, and there were good ingredients in those oils. And so then I shook it a hundred times, you know, with love and healing intent, and, you know, boom, the pendulum, you know, went all the way over. Yeah, you know, this is good, good for the body, compatible. And, uh, yeah, you know, I could see it work better. So the same thing, you know, with water, uh, energizing it with a hundred shakes probably will work. Um, and it will transfer your thoughts into them. Um, and you also basically start, you know, with the homeopathic principle. Uh, let's say you have an, uh, you, let's say you ate a poisonous, now let's not go there. <laughs> um, let us say you have an allergy, you know, towards a particular plant. So you take a little bit of this plant, put it in a bottle, and shake this bottle, you know, maybe with aqua distillata a hundred times. Then you take a little drop of this, put this in another bottle, shake that a hundred times. Then you take a drop of that, put it in another bottle, shake that a hundred times. Now once you drink that water, that uh, should pretty much beat an allergy. 
you know, if not, uh, take a drop of that bottle and shake it, you know, put it in another bottle and shake that a hundred times. Um, for you uh, guys from India, um, Opinaya, yes, the uh, music composer for filming music, Opinaya was my homeopathic physician in Bombay. <laughs> we used to hang out and chat. So, uh, yeah, so he um, basically said that nowadays you have to use much, much higher potency than Dr. Hahnemann uh, prescribed because, you know, the things are become cruder, you, so you have to overcome this. And, I mean, and he was a genius. I mean, he could do something in 15 minutes, get me from very dark into light. It was awesome. Another way to um, affect uh, a glass, no, to affect uh, water, you know, very, very um, easy uh, thing to do is just sunlight. Uh, but not in a plastic bottle, as I explained before, but um, sunlight in a glass bottle. Um, just put it into the sun uh, and it will get energized um, by the sun. Uh, it will taste better. Um, they are also um, just probably an hour in the sun will be fine and then take it out don't leave it out there for days huh? and uh, you can also use colored uh, glass bottles like a green uh, glass bottle would be good you know would be very healing but in general i would say you know the white light of sunlight you know carries all the light vibration in there and it just gets too damn complicated, you know. I did this, <laughs> you know, I had like seven bottles, <laughs> you know, and I got the uh, paint, you know, uh, glass, glass, uh, paint, translucent glass, but I had painted them, and it's just a lot of entanglement, you know. Uh, just go for white, you know. If you have sunlight coming into your window, put your glass bottle there, right? Uh, another way to treat your water is to infuse it with uh, gems like apophyllite pyramids uh, are excellent for this. Um, apophyllites come from volcanic water pockets and they grow perfectly. Now this here is an apophyllite and it has not been cut in any way. This is naturally formed and it is very more uh, biological compatible um, than quartz crystal. I mean, I take this in a wand every time over any quartz crystal, and I have access to some quite excellent quartz crystals, believe me. Um, so uh, these um, apophyllites, they um, work uh, fantastic in water. They're purified, they're uplifted, they add she to this. Um, you know, you just put an apophyllite on the floor, and you know, it runs chi out of it, you know. And you put it next to a plant, that plant is going to grow like crazy. And actually, ground-up apophyllites are used as soil supplements, which is a shame, you know. Uh, it's a shame, you know. They are, take millions of years to form and to grind them up, you know. It's <laughs> not good. Um, so, yeah, I have apophyllites in my water, for sure. Uh, and, um, well, we also have uh, sound frequencies, you know, you can, uh, you know, infuse your water with. Uh, again, water has fantastic memory, uh, better than an elephant. Um, so, you know, there are like uh, healing frequency, like 528 hertz, you know, like the esophageal frequency, um, all kinds of, you know, beneficial sounds, you know, anything from Tibetan oming, singing bowls, you know, can be exposed to the water. And, um, you know, you could probably even when we do the water blessing, put a, you know, pitcher of water in front of a speaker and see later on how that affected the water, you know, maybe measure the, you know, life force of the water with a pendulum before and after if you want to be nitpicky and know for yourself, you know. But it's good to do these kind of things, you know. Don't believe uh, because Wolfgang said so, <laughs> you know, believe because, you know, you figured it out yourself. All right. So um, another um, very important aspect is um, 
So there was this um, French um, archaeologist, physicist, um, that uh, studied in the 20s, uh, that studied the pyramids, and um, he, um, you know, tried to figure out the pyramids, and he uh, developed something, you know, which is called a Bovis scale, and um, that was his name. And, um, you know, it was a way uh, where he tried to measure the energy emanation from matter, you know, such as landscapes, geological falls, uh, the bodies of water, you know, underground streams, st streams, you know, which is like uh, dowsers, you know, they pick up on these kind of things. You know, I would say auras and chakras, you know, this is all something that he was interested in. And, uh, you know, also he tried to figure out, you know, to measure if uh, they were beneficial or detrimental to humans, to human health. And so in his scale, which went from zero to infinite, <laughs> um, he had, um, you know, what he considered like a, a Bovis um, scale reading of 6,500, you know, which he considered is uh, where it goes from health diminishing to health promoting. And uh, any number below this would be uh, health uh, negating, and any higher, you know, would be health increasing. And also, you know, he correlated this with the electron and atom spin. You know, so he said if you uh, go, you know, above 6,500, um, the spin is counterclockwise, you know, and everything spinning counterclockwise is good for humans. Um, so, but basically, uh, you know, by cheeing up the water, you know, you get, uh, you're supposed to get this effect, and that is not a problem, you know, for somebody <laughs> that follows my teaching. Okay. And um, you can also structure water and affect it with magnets. Uh, I knew people 30 years ago that were uh, selling powerful uh, magnets to hospitals and other institutions. Um, they would uh, be just attached to the water line and condition the water so you had less mineral deposits because that gets quite expensive, you know, when those things um, build up. And, you know, it all overall, you know, better uh, quality of water, you know, you need less detergents, etc. And um, it's a simple way, and um, of course, you know, I wear bracelets with magnets <laughs> in them, and, you know, to uh, tape some uh, magnets on your water supply is not a big thing to do. Uh, you know, you can get your own information on that. Uh, then um, there is this whole idea of uh, treating your uh, water with uh, pyramid energy. And um, so personally, I built myself copper pyramids, you know, enforced with crystals. Um, <laughs> they were about, you know, six feet high. And I slept on three rows of paper pyramids under my bed. Uh, so I worked a lot with pyramid energy, and um, so you can, if you have a bigger, you know, substantial copper, uh, you know, pyramid nicely aligned and charged up and purified, uh, you know, you can put, you know, a pitcher of water on there, and it just will get sheeted up pretty nicely. Um, personally, I don't do this anymore. I don't work with pyramids anymore. Um, the uh, I replace this with a divine symbol that I'm using. Uh, let me just pick one up here. Uh, these are here the uh, platonic solids that you uh, can see here. And uh, they basically, you know, focus this energy into the, the center and it uplifts uh, water, anything you put on there, you know, because the platonic solids is a grid with which this universe, you know, is, is constructed. So I use the platonic solids, which I would say is way more powerful than the pyramids, and, you know, they don't take much space, uh, much more practical. 
And um, so uh, there is also a technology where you use a lab spinner uh, in uh, to spin water, you know, for up to a, a month. <laughs> And this is supposed to be very, very potent for detoxification. You would probably assume they become super liquid and so are able to flash out all kinds of toxins. Um, there, can also, there are also ways where you can build this with an old um, uh, computer fan and, uh, you know, I think some resistors or something like this. There is information on YouTube. Uh, personally, if you want to spin your water, uh, just use a glass of water and and oh yeah, spin it counterclockwise. You know, everything spinning counterclockwise is considered to be beneficial for humans. Okay. And uh, another way, and this is a very good and practical way of uh, you know um, structuring water, is to uncluster it. Um, there are some great videos on this, you know, that show uh, the blood of a person uh, that is normal, where the uh, red blood podcast cells stick together, they clump together, and then they get unstructured water, and within 10 minutes, you know, they take another sample, and uh, all the uh, red blood cells are nicely separated, able, you know, to work through osmosis. Um, so unclustered water is uh, very, very good. Um, to it increases the wetness and uh, uh, of the water in in your blood, right? And so it has a greater cleaning power, you know, because it can go into finer nooks and crannies, you know, in your system, because it is not as syrupy or sticky, you know, and um, it. Um, you know, has better cleaning power. Right? Uh, and so there are ways to create this. And uh, basically the idea is um, when you have water coming through straight lines, you know, it uh, kind of the um, atoms start sticking together, which is not healthy. So this kind of clustering is broken up um, through, uh, by, you know, running, you know, the water through a tube that's filled with balls or tumbled gems, um, and, uh, you know, which break up, you know, this uniformity, you know, it's basically getting, you know, very pasteurized, <laughs> broken up into smaller globules, and uh, then which can, which are more liquidy and can get I easier absorbed and uh, there are claims that you need uh, only 25% of uh, what you would normally uh, need. You know, there are some interesting YouTube videos from the desert in near Tucson, Arizona and I have to say uh, I lived there and we tried to garden there and I'm impressed <laughs> you know, what they're doing with their uh, water there. You know, this is definitely phenomenal. And uh, so this is uh, quite easy to do, and you know, especially for gardening, I you know, in dry areas, you know, I think this is a wonderful thing that should be further explored. Um, then, of course, you know, we have this whole area of water with intent. You know, there is the big one, Dr. Masaru Emoto, and. Um, so basically, um, you know, he could show um, that by projecting thoughts, you know, positive or negative thoughts, you know, or even writing, um, you know, those symbols or words onto uh, the paper or the glass um, would affect the quality of the uh, crystals, you know, um, that came as a result of freezing those waters. And so basically, you know, the positive thoughts like beauty or soul or love, you know, created beautiful crystals and negative thoughts like hate, anger, and um, let's not get into details, uh, created like asymmetric, ugly um, shapes and forms. Um, so it uh, kind of, it's a very obvious uh, way to prove, um, you know, how things get affected. Um, so, 
I would say, you know, writing, yeah, if you want, you can write um, things and put them under a jar. This is an easy way. Personally, I have my, my waters on the, um, on the symbols, so I don't write on them. But um, pumping love into them is, like, really nice. You know, you just hold it and smile like an idiot and thank the water, tell it I love you. <laughs> then just send your love, you know, uh, from the exhale from your heart into the water and um, it will taste better, it will become you more and you probably just pour a whole glass right in there. You know, you can also like imagine an energy ball being put into the glass. Uh, in the restaurant, I would just put my hands <laughs> around the glass. Uh, even that, you know, was funny. I um, I was in a cafeteria uh, once, and so I just put my hands to the left and right of the food, you know, closed my eyes and just started charging up the food. And I opened my eyes and everybody is looking at me <laughs> in the cafeteria. <laughs> so I don't know what happened energetically that everybody picked up on it. but. I really try to look normal. Oh yes, and then this is whole area of structuring the water with your own visualization and intent. Right? And of course, you know, we all know about holy water. You know, you pray over the water and then it burns the lacquer off of demons. Right? In a similar way, uh, we Hindus, uh, you know, they make Ganges water. You know, it's, uh, you have to have a Brahmin thread, and you know, you should be initiated as a Brahmin. And uh, I don't wear a Brahmin thread anymore. <laughs> and you wrap that uh, around your thumb, and then you take the water, and then you stick your finger into it, but not that the dirty of the nail touches it. You know, and then I'm not going to say the mantra. But you basically, you know, ask the uh, rivers, the holy rivers of India, like the Ganga, the Saraswati, you know, etc., you know, to come and to be in the water. And uh, then, you know, you got, um, you know, Ganges water, and that is authorized to purify as a pujari, etc. You can do all kinds of really cool things with it. Uh, and then <coughs> there is some really interesting um, um, research I have come across. Um, it's uh, it's uh, somehow presented by Glenn Rhein on YouTube, where it has been uh, scientifically uh, proven uh, that, you know, I'm talking scientific like Petri dish, <laughs> scientific, right? Um, that uh, loving intention did not really affect the tumor tissue uh, as such, uh, but water treated with loving intention and dematerialization of negative tissue, you know, did extremely well. So somehow the tumor seems to be having a defense mechanism that bounces off, you know, those love vibration and. <laughs> I would say, you know, in uh, that I teach, you know, uh, the people that come to me, uh, when you frown, you know, all the love vibration bounces off you, you know, you're not getting any love, right? So maybe the uh, tumor has a, or cancer, you know, has a frowning attitude, so the love bounces off, you know, but the water kind of wears it down, right? So just uh, work with the water, you know, around. Uh, the tumor, okay. Uh, so, now let's uh, start uh, with the uh, guided meditation. Mm -hmm. So, I would say, you know, you take a glass of water, probably, you know, closed, you know, or a nice big jug of water. Um, <coughs> this is what I'm using. You know, of course, I had to, uh, unfortunately, had to clear uh, a vine jar. 
Um, but this is glass and I have shungite and all kinds of goodies. My secret recipe. In there. And it's sitting on the symbol. And so, you know, just uh, whatever vessel you have, you, you put your hands around and go comfortably. Uh, or you could also try putting this in front of a speaker. And later on, you know, you can check with the pendulum, you know, uh, from 1 to 100 percent. Uh, how does it compare, you know, to the water you normally drink? You know, how beneficial is it for you? And so, uh, another easy way to see if, you, you know, the water is compatible is just if it goes down easy. You know, if you... The body just keeps sucking it in. You know that is good water. If the if you cannot get a gag reflex, you take a couple of swallows and then you know yeah that is not really a good water. You know I don't know chemically or emotionally. So I you know would cheat this up at least when you figure this out. All right. So in this guided meditation, we will program the water for universal and then at the very end also for personal benefit you know like where you put your own little request in line, like for health and other uplifting meditations mm -hmm. so now close your eyes and you know stack your spine nicely and now we connect to source the absolute supreme being Nobody beyond, nothing higher. And also especially we invite God's uh, special emanation to transmute poisons, which is also the bringer of Mother Ganges to this planet, which is Lord Shiva. And we also connect to our guides, spirit guides, all the way up to source. And I connect to all my incarnations that support the divine plan for this my incarnation here. And I connect to Gaia. Well, the Gaia, of course, this is part of her, and so I ask her that she assists me with those prayers. And also the whales and dolphins, you know, with their fantastic consciousness of vibration that we have no clue as humans. <laughs> yes, I call them in to assist here with this. And of course, also the water deity, you know, also the uh, considered the overshadowing consciousness of all the oceans, lakes, you know, rivers. So there's a water deity as such, and then there's also individualized consciousness, you know, like the Pacific Ocean, like the Atlantic Ocean, the lakes, they're all different beings. You know, the rivers, they're all different beings. They have different personalities. So they're all invited here, you know, to participate in this programming. And now, Amen, 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 please. And first, I, in the human body, and I like to apologize for the devastation that we have caused to the quality of the water, you know, on, on a chemical level, on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, you know, and maybe on levels we have no clue about, you know. And me, I'm just a part a small part of the whole and so I asked you all to please assist and guide me you know to affect the highest good in this incarnation 
you know, let us work together in synergy to clear the outdated consciousness and bring in the codes of the fifth dimensional and higher consciousness, especially in this case, through the programming of the waters or the praying to the waters. And I ask my highest self now to align with me by stepping into my body. Amen. Now we are all addressing the water. Dear water and our spirit guides, of course, you know, that facilitate all those beings that facilitate now the programming of the water. Thank you for transmuting all chemical toxins and pollutants. And please transmute the frequency of all toxic chemicals biological, toxic effects of fertilizer, oil leaks, oil dumps, humans, and industrial sewers, and let's say radioactive material. Please, amen, 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 amen. Now, oh, and smile into your heart and smile into the waters, smile into the water that you're holding. Just take the love from the depth of your heart on the inhale and send it into the water. And smile like an idiot and breathe like a bellow. And for those that have done my videos before, just treat the water bottle like your inner child. Uh, and we asked our guides to continue to finish, because we don't know exactly how long it takes. Uh, but I feel an upliftment. Many times you can feel an upliftment that kind of tapers out that has a ceiling. That's how you know that that level is reached. Okay. And our spirit guides and waters, thank you for removing all traumatic memory of sound pollution from naval traffic, dynamite fishing, fracking, bombs, atomic bombs, you know, all those numerous pollutions that we put into the water, you know, on, based on vibration, on sound. It's horrible trauma, horrible trauma. Please find no remove on clear out, continue to finish for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes now. Amen, amen, amen. Smile like an idiot. And connect again with the heavens, with your high self. Stay connected to the earth. And breathe love. Breathe love. Soon you will feel this upliftment of energies. It's like an upflow of energy in your body for many of us. And a smiley energy comes over your lips. That's how you know it's done, by feeling it in your own body. And because Water has memory, it never forgets. So we asked our spirit guides all the way up to source, all waters, beings included. Thank you for removing all curses still held by the waters. You know, there must be so many curses 
piling up, piling up, piling up throughout the day. Please find out. Especially the curses, find them through all incarnations, through all time, through all dimensions. a little baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the energy gets better. Yes. Ah. And now we ask again, especially Lord Shiva, the transmuter of poisons. I thank you for removing all weather spells like it was used in naval warfare or for naval profits. Please do so now for the highest good and divine harmony with the now spun outcomes throughout all incarnations, all time, all dimensions and localities. Amen, amen. Some of you, you know that now history, a lot of islands have been saved from huge armadas through sudden, from, you know, sudden storms coming up, wiping out the enemies. Uh -huh. So, but the memories are still in the water. Of course, also understand that as you're programming your water, you're also programming mass consciousness water. And it affects it. You have an effect on the whole. Thank you. Thank you for being a pioneer. And now again, we ask Lord Shiva. We thank Lord Shiva, Source, and all our spirit guides, all our helpers. Thank you for removing any and all negative thought forms from humans, from black magicians, from the Zeta, from the Dracos, from the Anunnaki, thought forms like fear, anger, hate, despair, doubt, sadness, greed, grief, guilt, and other control systems that violate the free will and are designed to devolve human consciousness. Please do so now. Amen. 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 And do so throughout all incarnations, all time, all dimensions and localities. Amen. 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 Let's apply this to all, huh? <laughs> Amen. 
and smile like an idiot and breathe like a bellow into this beautiful water. And now we address the water again and our spirit guides. Thank you for transmuting the thought forms at the frequencies programmed and projected into the water by all oppressive governing bodies, groups, individuals and religious groups or races and adjust them to the fifth dimensional energies of love combined with wisdom and uplifting synergy with all benevolent sentient life forms all the way up to source. Now, Amen, 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 Amen. Throughout time, incarnations, all of them, dimensions and localities, Amen, Amen, Amen. Breathe deeply from the heavens into your heart and from your heart exhale into the water with love. Smile like an eagle. Thank the water, respect the water. Love. And now we then address the water beings as well as all all our helpers. Thank you for removing all ideological, vibrational and other psionic negative manipulations, maybe even stuff like cell phones, that intend to lower or cap and limit consciousness or the higher vibrations of the water, earth, fire and air and ethers and adjust them to the frequency of pure uplifting water, earth, fire, air and ethers you know, for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes for all incarnations, all time all dimensions and localities. Amen, 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 amen. Ah, yeah, this feels good. And smile like an eel and keep pumping love. And why these transformations are still going on, we again address the water spirits, the water beings and our Lord help us. Thank you for freeing and descending all soul fragments and ghosts from drowned animals and humans and other beings in the water. You know, all this fear, you know, that as well as, you know, whoever is stuck, please bring them home, join them with their high selves now. Amen, 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 amen. And smile, and on the inhale, just imagine drawing love from Mother Earth into your heart. And on the exhale, just, you know, bring that love out the top of the head and create a funnel all the way to Milky Way Galaxy. And just keep pumping that love up into Milky Way Galaxy that will create a stairway to heaven. <laughs> yes, a way for them to get home. that to be clear of all chains and spells and curses like all the gallery slaves that died with the ship all the slaves 
that died with their ships. You know, all the sailors and pirates and fishermen, so many fishermen, all the explorers that got lost, all their pain transmute this place into hope and upliftment. The memory can be there for the stories to be told, but the trauma, please release. Amen, amen, amen. If it's for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many of you probably feel a big upflow of energy into the heavens, or maybe even see it, see them leave. And a smiley feeling will overcome you. For many of you, yes, many of you have drowned in past lifetimes. And those soul fragments that didn't go, they can leave now. So let them go. Smile like an eating and send love into the heavens. Yeah. And now, while this is still going on, and we ask the volunteer spirit guides to please continue to finish with those ghosts and soul fragments. But now, we ask of all the water spirits and our guides, thank you for adjusting these waters to the frequency of fifth dimensional or higher energy that is most appropriate at this time period for humanity and the survival of the aquatics like dolphins, whales, mere people and the updated higher vibrational ecosystems. Please do so now and of course you know assist all the beings that need help then. Amen, amen, amen. Starts feeling good now. <laughs> and I feel this in my spine, and yes, we have spinal fluid. Very, very important for yogis. Very, very important. Spinal fluid. You know. Okay. And while this is going on, again, we address the water beings as well as our helpers. Thank you for filling this water with beneficial energies, with love, with happiness, prosperity, vitality, joy, please, peace and balance. Especially as the emanation of the Supreme is the aspect of Brahma to add beautiful energies loving energies, healing energies to the water now. Amen, 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 amen. And while this is going on, and this is quite intense, I have to say, for me, and I'm not even doing all the breathing here because I'm talking, so please keep on breathing, projecting love into the water, and smile like an idiot. But we asked and we thank, you know, our helpers for adjusting all water in our body to ideal dines levels for the human body. And dines levels are basically the water stickiness. <laughs> the water stickiness, the adhesion, you know. So uh, there is an ideal level for us and we ask and we, you know, we thank for having this suggested for us now. Amen, 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 amen. 
I, wow. I can feel this all over my body. Thank you guys, this is quite impressive. <laughs> Please show everybody else too with their own bodies. Wow. And if you feel like swaying around a little bit and adjusting your spine and cranking your neck, you just go right ahead. You know, that's part of upgrading your energy potential. So now comes the good one, the really big one here. Mm -hmm. And so while this is going on, right, so we ask our helpers, our spirit guides, you know, all the way to source, and of course the water consciousness. Thank you for programming this water to self-replicate these qualities to every other drop of water that it touches. And every drop of water those drops touch will have these qualities. And again, and again, and so on, and so on. So that it's going to be for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen, amen, amen. And, my friends, if that works, you're going to have sacred pee. Or maybe you can send us information about your experiments. Okay, now while this is going on, again, we think for the programming of this water to energize any water that it touches to equal or greater benevolent levels. Amen, 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 amen. So it doesn't diminish, it gets equal or better. You know, of course, as long as it is for the highest good. Yeah. And while this is going on, we also ask, May this water carry the energy of the spirit of the water to raise the energy of all water with which it comes in contact. May this process continue to repeat itself for the greatest good of humanity and all sentient life forms of earth that are transitioning to 5D consciousness. Now, amen, amen, amen. Now this can also be done to rivers, to lakes, uh, water lines, canals, <laughs> maybe oceans even, right? Or the swimming pool. Now, um, for your personal water, though, for your own drinking, I would add that. So I thank the water for adjusting to a surface tension and energy level that is perfect for my body, mind and spirit complex at this time. Amen, 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 amen. And I thank this water for cleansing all waste material for my cells, meridians, nadis and other energy vortex systems. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. And dear water, thank you for removing all fears, all anger, all despair, sadness, grief, negative thought, etc. that I'm still holding. Amen, amen. And again, I thank the water for removing outdated third dimensional energy and changing it to fifth dimensional energy in me. Amen, 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 amen. amen. 
And now, you know, think about something that you like to achieve in this life, you know, in short term, maybe you like weight loss or less inflammation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and now I thank the water for helping me with bloop, 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 and fill in. Amen, amen, amen. And now we thank all beings that assisted us in this little ceremony. And we ask that maybe any uh, portals that should be closed be closed. And Amen. And I will count to three and you will be back at waking day consciousness, completely subtle bodies aligned, full of energy. One two, three. Hello, my <laughs> friends. God, I'm still buzzing here from this water. I'm holding a jug of water here. <laughs> ah, yeah. So, if you will spend well to this meditation and your water glows in the dark now, you know, you may also treat yourself to a private session. You know, my prices uh, are very reasonable. Just send me an email. And, you know, for better YouTube rating, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and enjoy my other videos. I love you. Namaste.